Hello, this is Blake Angelos from Yamaha Corporation of America at Superbooth 18 in Berlin, Germany. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about the MX-88 and how cool this product truly is. Um, and then you have the ability to create your own user presets. So that's a cool thing about this is this iOS compatibility. And of course, compatibility with Cubase. It comes with Cubase AI. You can download that for free. And you have a DAW. You also have a remote control capability, which I'll show some of that as well. And then the last thing that's great about this is um, it is for anyone in the United States, it's 28 pounds. Anybody who actually uses the metric system, which I wish we did in the U.S., but it's, it's about 12 kilograms, so it's super lightweight. In fact, remarkably lightweight for something that is 88-note, great in hammer action. This action means that it's heavier in the low end and lighter in the high end like a grand piano because on a grand piano, the hammers are, he are bigger, so... It takes a little bit more force, and you feel that. And it makes sense. We're a company that's been making, you know, handcrafted acoustic grand pianos for over 100 years, so we're going to do a pretty great job making an electronic instrument that does that. So now that's what I'm going to talk about. The last thing I'll do is I'll show you kind of how I've done some stuff using some of the built-in performances where I recorded and rendered the audio, and then I'll take that audio and I'll show you how I'm going to stream that off of this USB drive as a WAV file and be able to play FM Essential with that as well using the USB to the um, iPad. So first thing I want to do is just play some of the sounds in this instrument so you know what it sounds like. It's a great sounding instrument. The piano, obviously we need to do very well nailing that sound. And I love this piano. The great thing about this piano is that I can go play a gig. And feel like I have this really great instrument that has a lot of expressiveness. I can play very soft. Or if I want to play loud. Very expressive, very great feeling, awesome piano sound. So that's an important part for a lot of people, playing a gig and taking this to the gig, being that it's 12 kilograms, it's very lightweight as well. Um, there's also great electric pianos as well, you know. Nice sounding, great, you know, it's got the bark in the low end and stuff. You would expect that coming from an instrument that is based on the Motif sound set, so it has a lot of those great sounds in here. There's great whirlies. There are some cool, let's see, choir sounds, you know, lots of just... So lots of just great sounds on board. These great orchestral things. <laughs> Expressive. When you hit it harder, I get the brass sound in there. So that's an important part. The most important thing is always sound quality. And the MX-88 truly delivers in sound quality. Um, so the next thing I kind of want to show here is some of the cool things that you can do with MX-88. So I'm going to move up to what's called a performance. As with the montage, as with most of our instruments, there's only one mode. It's called performance mode. And a performance mode is the playable part of the keyboard. On the MX-88, I can have up to two sounds that I can layer. I can have a drum groove going with it, and I can have an arpeggio going and that kind of stuff. But it's actually a 16-part 16 16 multi-timbral instrument as well. Same thing with montage. Montage performance, although on montage you get more. You have up to eight parts that you can play simultaneously. There's more DSP, more better. This is like the flagship, but this is the, the, uh, the, the lower cost you know, instrument, but it has the same type of architecture, so only one mode inside of this instrument. And some of these things, like this one in here, what I did with this one, this is one of the performances, and I just kind of went here. It's got a little... It's a little simple arpeggio, and literally, that's all I did was play one note. Okay, you get the idea, right? So now what I want to do with this instrument and what I did here on the computer that you can see right here, how nice is that that they already put it here, is that I recorded just that using the audio. Now, like a cooking show, rather than show you actually doing this, I already prepared this baked good here. So as I play this, you hear exactly 
that's the computer. That's exactly what I rendered. How did I render that? With a single USB cable, both MIDI and audio, directly into the computer. So I have that all inside of this instrument here. So if I want to, I can also touch this DAW remote button, and immediately I can start and stop, and I can move and select different tracks and so on. So I have some capabilities inside of this instrument to interact with Cubase. As you know, Yamaha and Steinberg are, we are the same family. So we have some really cool integration with this instrument. In fact, one of the things I like to show a lot of people is just how cool this integration can be. If I go over here just to the, um, the setup in here, it shows me the um, remote, which is right here. And you have different types of remotes, but on the MX-88, I can actually set some of these buttons here to do a whole bunch of different functions just with these soft keys that are over here. So let's see some of the things that I can do here. If I just select transport control, that's the category, but under that there's like tons of different things that I can customize this for how I want to work. And then I can save those setups. So if I have one thing where I want for just MIDI sequencing, I can have one for just rendering audio. I can have one for doing lots of different things. So there's this really slick integration with Cubase. What if I use Logic? Well, we can also set it up and use it with Logic. In fact, just last month I wrote an article about how to set up your MX with, with Apple Logic. So you can set up the the MIDI interface and the audio interface and the remote control surface with Logic or live and so on. So it works with other DAWs as well. It just this actually comes with Cubase, you know, for 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 free. Um, so what I did with this guy is that I rendered this track, and now what I want to do is I can add other tracks to this as well, or I can. And I did that before. I actually recorded something and I recorded it onto this. I pass it over to the USB drive. So I have it on here. And why did I do that? Well, because what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go, you can turn off the computer because I'm going to unplug from my computer and I'm going to grab this little thing. That's the Apple USB. I don't know if I did anything there. I don't know why it's buzzing. Is that a buzz? It's not this. What's going on? Stop the buzz. I don't think it's me. Who knows? It could be the 220 thing, 110 thing. I have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up what's called FM Essential, and there's my camera right here. And um, I'll just do my touch ID. There it goes. So this is FM Essential here. What FM Essential is, it is a four-operator FM synthesizer. So I can go over here and I can select things like what that is. It just changed there. Um, you can actually edit all of the operators here. And again, I said when you open up um, FM Essential for the very first time, it is it has limited functionality. And all I have to do to unlock the full features is to plug it in to any MX keyboard with this cable right here. So you can see some of the cool things it does. And I'm going to do a couple of th stuff in here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn off my local control so we're just going to hear just the FM Essential app in here. So I'm literally playing the iPad right now. And I can edit things. I can go in here and say, well, let's just do something that's a very, um, I can change the filter in here and I can actually use the hardware controls on the MX to control the filter. So there's these cool kind of interactions between both the hardware and the software on the M on this uh, FM Essential app as well. And like I said before, let's say I want to now use FM Essential and I want to play along with what I recorded in Cubase. Well, I can easily do that because I rendered the audio that I recorded in Cubase and I added it to my USB drive. So I touch my external song button right here and it brings up this thing that says Supa. Supa Booth. Yeah, that's is good. So um, now I can... And I can play along with this file that I didn't hear. So if I hit play, I even did a little cool fade in.
So I can play along with stuff. That's a, it's, a, it's a really cool system. You have the computer functionality where I can do a lot of my, my recording in here. I could use Cubasis inside the iPad and record that way. In fact, um, and uh, Cubasis is a cool iOS, by the way, app that is a sequencer that's based on Cubase as well. So, so what do we get here? We get a great sounding instrument, a great feeling instrument with really, really nice um, graded hammer action. Lots of great sounds that run the course of nice acoustic instruments, but also cool synth sounds with lots of arpeggios, drum grooves, and so on. And then you have the ability to connect to the iOS device and play that as well in the FM Essential app. And the best thing about this product is really the price. The price is very low cost. In the U.S., I can tell you what it is. I don't know what it is in, in Euro, but in the U.S., it's about $999, $1,000 to have this instrument. And the and I love it for as a gigging instrument, especially because of the of the lightweight at 12 kilograms. It easily is transportable on long gigs and stuff. So um, that's kind of a brief introduction to the MX88, 88 notes, FM Essential, computer connectivity, great sound, great feel, and that's uh, all I got. That's 15 minutes, right? So thank you very much for the uh, attention. And uh, again, I'm Blake Angelo, Super Booth 18 here in Berlin. Thank you very much for watching.